Hey guys, another exciting and interesting news week for VR. Starting off with the Oculus releasing another firmware update version 17. I always look forward to these updates because it definitely improves functionality and experiences of the Oculus. Facebook has announced this week they are having a year of the Quest and Rift S anniversary sale on the Oculus store and it's actually happening right now. I'm happy to announce the Curious Tale of the Stolen Pets games has just released hand tracking. And speaking of hand tracking, I started to wonder what would it be like if we also got rid of using our VR headsets. So let's begin with the Oculus version 17 updates. By now, everyone should have the updates available. For future reference, if you want to receive updates automatically as soon as it's available, just be sure your headset's connected to the internet and is charging and double check if your Oculus app on your phone, that automatic update software is checked. In order to double check that, tap on more settings, then to advanced settings and turn on update software automatically. This way you'll never ever miss an update again. Anyways, moving on, the Guardian is one of the new updates on version 17. For those who are not familiar with that feature, Guardian is where the users can actually create a border in VR that warns you if you get too close to the edge of your play area. As you can see, those floor pillows are being picked up by those blue lines with red dots surrounding the objects indicating you may want to move that while you're in VR. I can honestly say I have bumped in a few items myself so I'm actually glad that we have this feature. Another added feature to the Guardian is the glanceable boundary. If you toggle this on under the Guardian, when you glance down at the play area, the border will appear. Again, I thought this was a great idea because users can get immersed into VR so much. Well, let's just say bad things can actually happen. Also another small tweak, your quest will let you change your boundary colors to blue or purple or yellow. Currently the default color is teal. Next up is hand tracking. Hand tracking is a feature that allows you to use your hands instead of using your touch controllers to interact with your VR experience. With the new updates, hand tracking will be moved on the experimental feature section to the general release. Hand tracking will soon appear in full VR games such as Waltz of the Wizard, and some of you may already know that the Curious Tale of Stolen Pets now have hand tracking available right now. It's basically a game where you help your grandfather solve puzzles by interacting and exploring miniature worlds. It's definitely a unique experience. Each world is full of life filled with interactions, especially with the added layer of hand tracking now. Now that you don't even need controllers to interact with some of the VR worlds, it's even easier to pick up the abilities of the game and navigate the interface. I'm actually looking forward to playing with the Waltz of the Wizard with hand tracking where it provides the player a sense of having these magical powers by using your hands without any use of a controller for more of a physical and immersive experience. Other developers can start submitting their hand tracking projects starting on May 28th, so more games with hand tracking should also be available the upcoming months. But Currently, the touch controllers are the main inputs of many of the games. Recording your game footage or live streaming received a small update. Users can now actually toggle the red dot on or off. The red dot indicates whether you're casting or recording video, live streaming. I personally like leaving on the red dot just so I know I'm actually recording and it's working properly. But I do like the fact that Oculus has given us the option of actually turning this feature off if you find the red dot a bit annoying when you're recording. So to turn this off, just go to settings. Go to device and scroll down to the video capture indicator. Sharing your VR experiences on Facebook is actually easier now. So after you capture a photo or a video, you are able to see a preview of your capture. Then if you like, you can title it and then post it on your Facebook page. Just make sure your account is linked with your quest. There's actually a few more updates like voice dictation, social reporting, and fixes on bugs. If you want to check them all out, the updates are under the Oculus release notes. I'll put a link in the description if you want to take a closer look. So Oculus has released the sales figures as they reach their one year anniversary. The company has sold $100 million worth of Quest content in the first year. According to Facebook, 20 titles have pulled 1 million each. So they are celebrating on the Oculus store that started on May 21st with their anniversary sale on the year of the Quest and the Rift S to commemorate this occasion. So you can check it out in their Oculus store. You may find a game that you may be wanting for a while. They're not only selling individual experiences, they are selling packs as well. Like on the Quest side, they are selling the Quest Best Sellers pack which includes 7 experiences and the Quest Essential packs that includes 5 experiences. So with all the updates that Oculus is releasing, especially with hand tracking that enables your hands to be the input instead of using the controller, I started to wonder what would it look like if we didn't 
didn't use a VR headset? How would we even view VR experiences without the headset? And I know I should be talking about this maybe 10 or 15 years from now, but this guy may have the answer. This is Elon Musk, tech entrepreneur, founded companies such as PayPal, Tesla, and SpaceX. So Elon has been working with a company called Neuralink. And if you haven't heard of them, they are basically a company that wants to create a chip to be implanted to your brain to connect with your computer, which is termed brain machine interface or BMI. Now, as you might imagine, this can be somewhat a controversial topic if you look at headlines from the media and many do have a problem with this. Now, it's not a new idea. We have been merging with technology since the development of computers because so much of our lives are digital. With the development of computer to the internet to the smartphone, all lead to merging us with tech. So Neuralink plans to literally merge technology, or in this case, a chip into our brain. They call this chip the N1 sensor that can be controlled through an app on your smartphone. It'll be wireless, so that means there's no wire sticking out of your head. If people do decide to implant this chip in their head, Neuralink's goal is to make it as easy as something more like LASIKs or eye surgery that includes no general anesthesia and no type of hospital stay. Like I said, this is not new. There's recent work from other companies where a man who lost his arm to cancer is controlling his robotic arm just by thinking. This is where Neuralink will focus their efforts on in the beginning, where they can possibly help people who are disabled. Now, why am I telling you all this? Well, because Neuralink's next stage will also focus on people who are not disabled and they want to connect their motor and sensory cortex of their brain to machines where they can control things like computers, smart home gadgets, drones, and of course this includes virtual reality headset without lifting a finger just by thinking. Believe it or not, VR has attempted to do something like this with the brain, but not exactly with a chip. There's a company called Neurable, a Boston startup that did some interesting work relating this. They developed a brain controlled virtual reality game that aims to have players brain pick up things and throw things around the room. They had a demo of a sci-fi game called Awakening. This was actually shown back in 2017. It works with an electro headband that connects to a HTC Vive virtual reality headset. In the game, the player is a child with telekinetic powers who must escape a government lab by using the power of the mind to pick up things like balloons, alphabet blocks, rings, and throw them around. So they use electrodes placed on the scalp and to track brain activity. The software then analyzes the activity and performs the action. The hardware, as you can see, can look clunky. And some even said during the test, it only works with only some people. Now, this is just interacting with the machines with your brain and eliminating in between steps like the use of your hands. The next step for Neuralink is connecting people's brain to the internet that can engage our visual and audio cortex of our brain. For instance, if you want to do some research on a particular topic, currently you must input the information onto the computer through the use of a keyboard or a smartphone to find the information. But now with a brain computer interface, the person can actually just download the information or the experience into the brain. It's just a lot quicker or more efficient way of doing things. Ultimately, if Neuralink can engage all of our sensory cortex from our brain, including from touch to feel to smell, other people can just upload experiences and you can actually download it and really experience it yourself, including all the sensory sensations. After all, the things that you feel or touch are just a series of electrochemicals or messages being sent to your brain. Neuralink can take advantage of that and provide you those same output or sensations into your brain. Take for example the game Curious Tale of the Stolen Pets that just got released for hand tracking. One had said all they're missing is haptic gloves where it provides that touch sensation. Imagine not using haptic gloves for that but instead having the touch sensation go directly into your brain without even wearing any kind of additional equipment through the use of the chip. In a snow-filled environment, just download the experience with even the sensations of being cold, or if you like playing Rec Room Paintball in VR, actually feeling the shot from the paintball gun. So that means the technology of Neuralink will remove the need for VR headsets, controllers, hand tracking, haptic suits or gloves, or trackers. Basically removes any external simulations therefore removing any barriers or issues with the equipment. Now, why does Elon Musk want to implant this N1 sensor into our brain? Well, ultimately, he says humans need to merge with artificial intelligence or AI. He doesn't want humans to be left behind because he feels AI can eventually take over the human race. Elon's not saying this will happen anytime soon where Neuralink will be implanting chips routinely. He said maybe in 10 or 15 years from now because of the technical challenges and FDA approval but he did say that Neuralink plans to put a version of an implant in a person within a year, meaning this year. 
Alright guys, that's all I have for now. If you like more videos like this, press the like button and consider subscribing and hitting the notification button. Talk to you guys all later.